G'day guys, as we know by this point, January 9th, maybe you don't know, in which case I'll explain it to you regardless, but January 9th is kind of the deadline Bitcoin has to make its next move. We're either going to be going upwards or downwards before that January 9th point. There's a variety of pieces of information, variety of data sets surrounding that. We'll explain all of those in a second in this video. But the data that actually surrounds that has been supported even further by further analysis I've been doing over the last few days, including Bitcoin monthly returns, the Ethereum chart, and the total cryptocurrency market cap mark cap chart all proving the same kind of deadline in that early January region and some even saying mid January but the point is within the next couple of weeks here and I mean that quite literally what week and a half here we should be seeing a directional decision on Bitcoin which is a great relief because people are getting very bored right now understandably volatility has reached lows we haven't seen since 2020 uh, and maybe even 2018, I haven't checked in a couple of days there. But the fact of the matter is, people are bored, volatility is low. This is generally what you see before a bottom, I will say. However, nothing's confirmed yet at this point. But we need to look into that deadline further. Let's get into it before we do so. Check out BitGet, check out the VIP sale ending in three days, 30% off. Check out uh, the Crypto Academy courses. All of that stuff is in the pinned comment and the description below. All right, guys, let's get into it. So just briefly looking at kind of the shorter term here for Bitcoin, and ultimately we are in a bear flag formation. We do have a downtrending yellow line as well that is kind of keeping us suppressed downwards. When we do manage to get above that eventually, of course we will eventually get above it. Uh, that will be a reversal point and that's where we're willing to pick up a lot of Bitcoin. Uh, the bull market support band supports that line. We've also got the 200 day SMA supporting that line. And if we brought up the weekly chart, we could see the 300 week SMA also supports that line. Uh, and, and all of that makes it major resistance, but it also means it's, it's a very big accomplish, accomplishment if we do get above it. So that is kind of a target we're looking at right now. If you're not sure where you'd buy Bitcoin, you're not sure where the reversal point would be, this yellow line and the lines that surround it, bull market support band, 200 day SMA, 300 week SMA, all in the same region. That's really what we're targeting. That's really what we're aiming for for Bitcoin, which isn't too far away. You know, there's a lot of resistance there. In fact, it's probably one of the stronger resistance zones we've ever seen. Uh, but, you know, it's only 12% away. So we're actually very close to that reversal point. If we did have a sudden surge in Bitcoin price, we could get above there very quickly. Uh, and, and I suppose stemming off that, the question you need to ask, and the question I've already answered a couple of times here, so I am repeating a bit of information in this video. But the question you need to ask is, you know, once you understand where the reversal point is, and once you understand where the low is, you have to say, well, when are we going to be making a decision? When are we going to be moving below the low or getting above the reversal point? That question is very hard to answer. But what you can answer is when are we going to begin the move that gets us above the low or gets us to a reversal point? And that question is quite easy to answer. And that question is answered via RSI in a lot of senses. Now, the first thing I want to do before we look into RSI is actually look at the weekly chart for Bitcoin, okay? This is the weekly chart. We have an uptrending yellow line, eight-year support line trending upwards on Bitcoin. We have the bull market support band, which as we just looked at, lines up with that yellow line in the shorter term and the 200-day SMA. That's trending downwards. At the current trajectory of the bull market support band, it will be crossing beneath this eight-year uptrending support line in around mid-February, meaning Bitcoin will have to make a move either above the bull market support band and hence reversing, or below the eight-year line and hence going down further by mid-February. But we can narrow it down more than that. Mid-February is obviously a while away. We're talking a month and a half at that point. We can narrow it down more than that. And the way we can narrow it down further is using the RSI. Now, this is something I haven't looked at before. Okay, I've looked at the weekly RSI. I haven't looked at the daily. Daily RSI is showing us a pattern of consolidation, a triangular pattern on the RSI lining up with the bear flag that we see here. And that pattern will be coming to an end around mid-January. But given the fact that the 9th of November is so prominent on the weekly chart, which we'll look at in a second, we're going to be expecting that to happen by the 9th of January, right? And, and we'll get very tightly compressed by that point. So RSI on, on Bitcoin. Lining up to mid-January, early January breakout. Excellent stuff. That's great to hear. Ethereum, right? Same situation. Downwards trend. Okay, we have a bear flag formation on Ethereum as well. In fact, it's not really a bear flag. It's it's honestly more of an ascending triangle formation, which is quite a, quite a lot more bullish. But the fact is we have a structure there on Ethereum. And we have a triangle on Ethereum in the RSI, just like on Bitcoin. Guess when that one is coming to an apex? Same time, mid to early January. In fact, on the 9th itself, Right, so this is Ethereum and Bitcoin on a daily chart pointing to the same point of trajectory, the same point of apex, the same end date for this consolidation. All right, now we can move into something else. What else? Uh, 
you know, this is the uh, S&P 500. Sorry, started there a little bit. S&P 500, yes, it's not consolidating for January. However, it is seeing a similar triangle consolidation pattern. And look, that will most likely be playing out around the same time period as well. That's a bit rough analysis. But the point is, and another point I want to make here is the total cryptocurrency market cap. And again, it's doing the same thing as Ethereum and Bitcoin. And you might argue, well, all these charts are connected. Of course, they're doing the same thing. That's not the point. The point is all the charts are connected. Yes, and all the charts are saying the same thing. So yeah, I, I suppose that is the point in a certain way. If all the charts are saying the same thing, if all the charts are pointing at that mid-January, early January region around the 9th of January as the deadline, guess what? That's probably the bloody deadline, right? So we see it on the total cryptocurrency market cap chart as well. We're seeing that deadline around that 9th of January period exactly. And then we can move in to the weekly chart, which is where the main bulk of the data really is. And this is the weekly chart chart RSI and this thing is very 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 major because this has been forming this triangle formation on the RSI has been forming since December 2020 right we've formed an upwards trend here and we've formed a downtrending resistance line and guess what that will be coming to an apex on the week of January 9th okay so just a distinction to make here the candle opens on January 9th okay so the breakout itself doesn't need to happen before January 9th it, it will happen Bef you know, before or within the week of January 9th's weekly candle. So basically the same thing. It's just a little uh, difference in phrasing there, but that, that essentially points for the same thing. So what would happen, right? What would happen hypothetically on Bitcoin? Well, I'll tell you what would happen. We would move above the market support band, okay? And hence breaking the downwards trend and confirming a trend reversal to the upside that we haven't seen on any scale since the breakdown in November. Or we would break down below the yellow line form new lows on Bitcoin and trend downwards to that 13.8K or 11.5K level. That decision will be made in January, okay? Now, very important to note, the actual breakouts themselves will probably, will, well, it's hard to say, but the actual breakouts themselves are not due by the same point as the directional decision is due. Very important to note because these RSI triangles could break to the upside. Bitcoin can still be below resistance. The point is, it is likely that if these triangles break to the upside on all these charts, Bitcoin will break resistance. It's likely, it's not certain. The fact of the matter is there will be a major retest in that early January period or before, you know, we could even be seeing in the last few days of December here. Uh, it's very hard to say exactly when it will be on such a specific time frame because we're talking only a week and a half here. And you know, when we've got low volatility, like we've been seeing on Bitcoin, discussing whether something's going to happen in the next few days or whether it's just going to drag out sideways for another few days is, is very difficult to tell because nothing's happening in the market right now. If you look at the short term on Bitcoin, you go to the hourly chart, literally it's just ridiculously boring. It's just completely sideways. Nothing is going on whatsoever. And, and you know, you could, uh, well, you could talk all day about where you think Bitcoin's going in the short term, but the fact of the matter is nothing really matters at this point other than the actual big directional decision because we're in such a tight range now. We're, we're getting really, really compressed here. You know, as I said, to the upside, all we need to break is 18.8K and to the downside, all we need to break is 15.4K. Yeah, it's a big range, I suppose, right? It's a 20% it's range, but it's not massive. It's not massive enough to really just delve into the short term every day. The fact of the matter is we need to be seeing a, a big confirmation either above or below one of those levels. And that's when the major stuff will start happening. That's when the volatility will pick back up. Um, but, you know, looking at things like the power index law on Bitcoin, uh, and, and, you know, and, and this is showing we're at the bottom. We're looking at the four-year cycle, and this is showing we're at the bottom or potentially near the bottom. And, and, you know, even looking at something like Bitcoin monthly returns, you know, January is a very red month. In, in previous bear marks, we saw a 33% decrease in January 2015, a 25% decrease in January 2018, uh, 2019, sorry, same thing, right? The... 8% there in January 2019. But the fact of the matter is, you know, even if we follow that pattern, even if we go down in January, the four year cycle says Q4 bottom or January bottom. Okay. And guess what happens next historically? Next up, we see 18% gain in February, right? We see 11% gain in February. Okay. So even if we go down in January, even if we test those lower levels, right, which a lot of people are expecting, you know, even if we go down 11.5K, 13.8K, we have a very red January, everything's bearish. The odds are still in our favor for February. So it's really good to see uh, here. I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not particularly worried about Bitcoin at this point. I, I think the only real thing that really gets me bothered and gets me quite uh, anxious about really, and I think this, it's the same with a lot of people, is, you know, what's going to happen with the S&P, 
right? Because it's very likely to drop down further. It's not certain. It's not certain. We discussed that yesterday, but it's very likely to drop down further. Will Bitcoin get dragged down by that? That's the big question. Because for charts themselves, hey, the charts themselves really aren't concerning right now. The charts look pretty normal, right? This bear market's been extremely normal. This bear market hasn't gone up and gone on ridiculously longer than other bear markets. It hasn't gone down further than other bear markets. The structure's the same, right? Everything that's really happened is kind of similar. So it's not the structure. It's not the charts that worries people. What worries people is the speculation about the S&P. Uh, and speculation is just that, you know, it's speculation. You have to wait for confirmation. And that's what we're doing here when we say January 9th, we're waiting for confirmation. All right, guys. So before we end the video there, check out the uh, the BitGet exchange here. We've got 4,100 USD in rewards. We've got a 15% discount on trading fees, non-KYC. If you select other when you're signing up, you can sign up from anywhere in the world and use the cheapest exchange on the cryptocurrency market that we personally use at the Wolves of Crypto and in the VIP group as well. Check that out. Sign up using my referral link. Get all those perks and rewards there. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.